Hey guys, today we'll look at top 5 hidden gem Space Marine units that I think might be very much undervalued. And without further ado, let's dive right in. And number 5 is the Judiciary. It's the character that was released with the Indomitus box set and wasn't really that popular for a long time and is still not that popular. And I think a lot of people might misinterpret his worth. Space Marines have a lot of melee oriented detachments and units specifically that would benefit a lot from having having this character inside the unit as a leader only cost 70 points so for a space marine character that's not a lot it's not that cheap but it's also not a lot it provides his unit with the chaplain's leadership 5 so if you're running a big squad and you are afraid of them being battle shocked it's a very good way to help them not be for example, Blood Angels could benefit a lot from having this guy as a part of the Blade Guard unit inside, say, an Impulsor, as you can then use Red Rampage to compensate for the lack of plus one to wound that you would otherwise probably get from the Chaplain. And pretty much any melee oriented Tacticus armor is gonna be very much happy with having this guy as a part of a unit. My main problem with him always was that you, in most cases, want a character that provides even more than Fight First. Fight First is very good, but I would usually go for the offensive first. So, Chaplain in this case for plus one to one that is so important for those mid-strength attacks like the Blade Guard and the Assault Intercessors. But in case of Blood Angels where you can get already plus two to strength with the detachment ability and plus one attack so it's already helping you get that damage across and also you can enact the red rampage or use the red rampage stratagem to get the plus one to wound the lance and lethal hits you don't really have a problem with wounding anymore so you would rather have the defensive capabilities of having fight first and having fight first on a reasonably durable melee unit is very very painful and annoying for your opponent believe me so Blood Angels, Gladius as well, can utilize this guy very well because, again, you have Honor the Chapter, so you don't really need the Chaplain always as a part of the squad. Obviously, it's nice to have that, but it's not mandatory. So perhaps for that Blade Guard and Assault Intercessor squad that doesn't have a Chaplain as a part of it, you can instead have the GG Seer. And he does fight quite well with his 5 attacks, his strength 7, AP 2, damage 2, so he fights better than a regular Chaplain. He also has Dev Wounds on his big sword and precision so if you are target if you're fighting against a unit where there is maybe an important character you might want to snipe out he is a good option for that plus you can obviously put an enhancement on this guy uh, something that can buff the squad perhaps or maybe something that specifically buffs his abilities as a fighter in this case a good example would be honor vehement or war tempered artifice the former gives him a plus one attack and strength and the latter gives him plus three to strength of his melee attacks he also has a special ability that allows him to increase the number of attacks he has each time he kills a character which i think is very thematic not it's a very niche ability it's not going to happen a lot but it's cool when it does next one a very unusual one it's a storm raven gunship so the old brick of a flyer I remember the good old days in the 8th edition, very early 8th edition, when a list with three of these, or maybe even more, maybe even more than three, I don't remember exactly, uh, with Gilliman was the meta, because Gilliman was giving them crazy rerolls, and they had all the guns, and they were flying, so it was very difficult to charge them, or something like that. Obviously, times are very different now, so they are different as well. However, they are not bad at all. Actually, I think that they are much better now than most people realize. And here's why. So it's a transport with a 20 inch move because it can hover. So you just decide for it to hover before the game and it loses the aircraft ability. You don't have to deploy it in reserves. You can deploy it on the board as a normal transport as a rhino, a big rhino. It's a 20 inch move rhino. Well, obviously the price is different, but hear me out. Toughness 10 and minus one damage so like a redemptor obviously not two plus save three plus save but that's still not bad three plus save in cover that's good and 14 wounds and this thing can carry 12 astartes models so nothing to write home about well it's it's an okay amount it's enough for you and it can be tacticus and gravis as well so terminators gravis centurions whoever you want obviously with limitation on how much you can fit in there and a dreadnought <laughs> So this thing has a special sort of a grav 
mounting point on the back side. That's why it has this strange sort of shape with the very chunky front and uh, back that is very skinny. So that's because the dreadnought is supposed to be hanging off of there. The cool part is that there is no limitation, at least in the codex, as far as I can see, on how big the dreadnought can be. So it's anything with a dreadnought keyword. It means that we can actually uh, put a Brutalis dreadnought inside this thing and uh, just swing it 20 inches up the board and uh, as with any transport you can afterwards disembark you cannot charge but you can disembark and uh just uh, that that is a crazy move and uh in addition to that, you can disembark with those, say, 12 assault intercessors or something like that. Yes, there will be a very tight disembarkation, obviously. I'm not sure you can even disembark the Brutalis base uh, wholly within the uh, bay, three inches of the base of this uh, model, but I hope there is something in the FAQs that fixes that, if that is the case, because it shouldn't be a problem. This assault force is already 20 inches up the board and in your opponent's face. I think that is quite an interesting combo obviously you have to play tactically and i'm not saying it's game breaking or anything like that i'm just saying that imagine for a second using this thing and it costs 240 points the transport itself but it has a ton of guns on it and it also quite durable for what it does and obviously the transport capability so i don't think that's such a bad deal think about that and perhaps maybe i have inspired you to try that yourself in a roster someday i just imagine having all that stuff in my grill turn one for example when my opponent has done that and especially if you do it carefully and in such a way that it's not easy for me to charge the stuff that has disembarked and uh, i have not been able to shoot this flyer beforehand as well or maybe i have tried that but i couldn't kill it because it was too durable so i just wounded it and it's still did the job that it wanted to and i also exposed my assets that were shooting at the flyer so that can be quite depressing as an opponent of this thing next are the outriders and uh, now they are 80 points and i'm again remembering how much i like these huge bikes they can travel 18 inches in one turn so 12 inch move and uh, a six inch automatic advance and uh, they're probably the biggest problem of theirs is that they're mounted so they cannot go through walls it means that you cannot really substitute these the scouts or you know, assault intercessor with jump backs with these uh, it's a different kind of a unit it's a different type of a recon unit but they can work well in tandem because these guys are a bit more survivable durable than the assault intercessors and even more scouts four wounds each toughness five so very very low price per wound and reasonably high durability for this kind of a unit and with any kind of a buff on top of their chainsword attacks they can actually become quite scary for the cheap chaff unit that they should be fighting against also if you are in the gladius or stormless detachment something where they can advance and charge that can be potentially a lot of very early charges that your opponent doesn't want to happen because not all armies have fall back and charge and shoot not all armies want to be fighting these bikes or to be just trying to deal with them very early in the game i'm not saying that uh, they are gonna crash the flank of your opponent they will be destroyed most likely but you will lose 80 points unit which is not that bad and you can potentially sell their lives for a very high price to your opponent so if you are thinking of adding some sort of a support unit to your list consider outriders they might not be as bad as you think especially now at 80 points per squad of three Next are my favorite assault intercessors. You know how much I love these. I have two soft spots in my heart. First is for Redemptors, second is for assault intercessors. I don't know why. And also third is for Blade Guard. That's my tri triumvirate of my favorite Space Marine units. And I really think that assault intercessors don't get enough love that they should be getting especially now in uh, 10th edition because in 9th edition they're just very cheap intercessors with nice chain swords which is not a bad start don't get me wrong but they didn't have that extra layer of something that you would really want them to have and you could you needed to really tune the faction the roster for them to work and now i think we have more flexibility with them they have OC2, so their battle line. It means that it's reasonably hard to get an objective from under them unless you kill them. They are cheap. They have 
ton of attacks with chain swords, strength 4, AP 1, damage 1. And obviously this sergeant can have thunder hammer. And they also get full rerolls to wound when they are on the objective. Well, they're fighting something that is on the objective. And they always have reroll ones to wound. Couple that with a good buffing character and a good use of a stratagem, and they can be punching way, way above their weight. And I mean it, I've tried it myself. And they are 15 points a model for a 3 plus save, 2 wound Space Marine. Not a scout, Space Marine. 15 points per model. So they're just two points more expensive than the scouts currently. And I especially like these guys in Gladius, for example, because you can combine the Assault Doctrine for them to advance and charge with Honor the Chapter 4 plus 1 to AP, which they really need if they're fighting something with good armor, uh, so they get plus 1, so AP 2. And also the Lance, which also they need quite a lot, because yes, it's good to have full reels to wound if you're fighting something on objective, and they should be if you're charging them in but having plus one to wound in addition to reels will mean that their efficiency will skyrocket you can also pretty much get a similar result if you have a chaplain with them though you will not obviously get the plus one ap part but you can do similar things with other detachments for example blood angels where you can get plus two to their strength so a chain swords with the strength six and plus one to wound and full reels so they will be wounding anything they look at obviously Red Rampage for Lance and Lethal Hits also is on the table. With Stormlands, you can also get Advance and Charge with them always, not just in the Assault Darkness like the Gladius. So a lot of detachments do have a place for these guys in my opinion. I'm honestly considering trying to build a list with 30 of these. I don't have enough. I only have, I think, 10 in my collection. But I'm thinking that perhaps it's time to expand the Assault Intercessor line in my Death Watch. So do try it out and let me know if you liked it. Lastly, the Vindicator. I still don't understand why so few people use this guy. I've been talking about him for a while now, and I think he is a forgotten piece of very good tech that a more roster should be using. Yes, there is the Lancer, and yes, Lancer has a good advantage in terms of the range, but I still think the Vindicator should be a part of much more spaceman list. It's a very tough mid-sized tank, so relatively easy to park him behind ruins. And he has OC3, so regular for a tank of his size, and he has 190 points, so a bit on the more expensive side. But if you look at how well he does at destroying stuff, then that's when you understand why he costs so much. He's toughness 11, so that's important because there are quite a lot of strength 10 threats out there. 2 plus save, obviously, as you should have on the tank. And in cover, it's very important plus 1 save, so very hard to penetrate his armor. 11 wounds, movement 9, which isn't bad, but a bit on the slow side, so it will be a bit harder for you to get angles from ruins, so you should not be hiding these guys too much uh, if you plan to use them, and you should be. So you should be positioning them as close to the line as possible right from the get-go, because their goal is to be soaking up that damage as well as providing you with firepower and of course most importantly here is the gun so strength 14 which means that you'll be wounding any monster vehicle anything on threes and mm, pretty much anything that is not monster vehicle on twos are very unlikely that there is anything in between there ap3 so very good it means that even in cover a 2 plus tank will still have to roll a 4 plus save to pass and damage is d6 and most importantly it's d6 plus 3 shots so very good reliable mount with blast very versatile weapon and good against almost any target whatsoever as i said the only limiting factor there is a 24 inch range that's why i said you should not be trying to hide this thing too much and also that's where it's good to be in a gladius detachment for example where you can advance and shoot this thing and also the siege shield rule is great to help you from tagging and being able to shoot that blast gun however you like, even when there are units within engagement range of you. So let me know which unit you consider to be a hidden gem in the Space Marine Codex. I very well might have missed something that is very good and is rarely used, so let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.